Gold and silver prices are moderately up and have hit five-week highs this Wednesday. Here to talk the metal moves we are seeing is Peter Hug, Global Trading Director over at Kiko Metals. Uh, Pete, thank you so much for joining us this very busy metals week. My pleasure, Danny. So gold, gold, as you know, Pete, broke through 1578 this week, and here we are above 1600. Is this simply a fear trade here, or you know, could we easily now get to 1623? Yeah, I mean, you have to put it down to a fear trade. I mean, if you look at the markets, uh, the dollar is actually strengthening against both the euro and, and the yen. Um, there's been some uh, relief on the 10-year. It's uh, back down around 157. Uh, so that's that's sort of mitigating uh, the uh, the uh, strength of the dollar. But you know, given this dollar move over the past, let's say, two weeks, uh, indicates to me the dollar move is probably also a safe haven trade as mm -hmm. people move into the dollar and into the U.S. equity market. And when normally under uh, you know normal market conditions, that would be a headwind for uh, the precious metals, especially gold. Right. And uh, you know the fact that gold is now north of sixteen hundred dollars after it got through seventy eight. Uh, uh, I mean, it's just a blur to me. I can't remember if it was this week or last week that it got through uh, 70. I think it might have been uh, just this Monday. Um, is uh, an indication that there is still a lot of nervousness in this market, and uh, and people are are putting gold and uh, in fact even silver in, into their portfolios as a hedge against uh, you know an economic uh, slowdown caused by the uh, coronavirus. Right. So. That is very much in the news. Well, what's interesting, Peter, or at least what I find interesting, is when the coronavirus hit, you know, it, we didn't really see it move gold until this week. Uh, so are you surprised that it took a while for that fear trade to build? Are, would you have expected to see it before? Well, you know, I, th I don't think the market took it as serious, uh, uh, as serious as it is, uh, uh, you know, and then, you know, all of the stories continue to compile and, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, with the Japanese cruise ship and, uh, you know, just a number of things uh, developed. And, uh, you know, a couple of days ago, the, you know, the, the Chinese uh, government has indicated that uh, they are going to be very accommodative. Uh, fiscally accommodative. Uh, today, they finally announced that they uh, also admit that their GDP number is going to get hammered in the first quarter. Uh, so now, you know, I think the market is really taking this uh, a much more to heart that this is really, really a serious mm -hmm. situation, especially in China. So far, you know, the virus from a perspective of a global issue has not become one yet. But it's certainly, uh, if you you know just just follow the news reports, you look at the streets in China, uh, they're virtually empty, uh, and you know the factories uh, are still not at full capacity. The supply chains are getting disrupted, so there is now a real risk that uh, the, if this continues for very much longer, it could have a dramatic impact on global growth. Uh, which will then put all of the central banks, including the Fed, on full uh, monetary right. easing policy. And I think that reality is starting to potentially sink in. And I think because of that, I think that's why you're seeing gold north of 1600. And now let's talk about the madness that we're seeing on the palladium front. Uh, you know, spot palladium trading as high as 2,829 an ounce, uh, meaning that at the peak, the metal was roughly $275 above the old record uh, it hit last month. Uh, so with the economic slowdown though, you know, you would think that it would affect the PGM metals uh, to the downside. I totally agree with you. I mean, you would have thought uh, first with the uh, Chinese New Year when they were shut for the week and then with the coronavirus now and industrial demand obviously uh, uh, stagnant at best uh, in the Chinese economy, uh, that you would have seen some softness, uh, certainly softness in demand on the PGMs, but palladium uh, today it traded in uh, almost a $280 range. I mean, just Crazy. ridiculous for palladium, you know, a 10% yeah. move or a 10% range. Uh, and rhodium again continues to fly. It's uh, rhodium now is basically two markets. One, you have the rhodium uh, rhodium industrial sponge market, which most of the manufacturers trade in, and you have the physical market, which is trading at a discount because there is so much physical rhodium coming into the market. Uh, but again, given the context of of growth prospects, uh, if you believe the story, you would expect 
that there would minimum be at least a pullback uh, on palladium back maybe to the $2,000 level and, you know, rhodium back uh, maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of about 7,500 to 8,500. But every day they just keep roaring along. So there is uh, an obvious supply issue with both those metals and even with the diminishing demand, at least immediate diminishing demand because of uh, the industrial slowdown in China. Uh, this indicates to me that there could be significant upside still ahead once the Chinese come back in full force. Right, so right, right. This, it's uh, strictly a supply story and right now there is going to be significant deficits. They are expecting significant deficits in both palladium and rhodium yeah. this year. I mean, the, you know, palladium is used for catalytic converters in cars, as we all know, Pete. So is, this, is there just an overwhelming demand? Are they just making more cars? Or, you know, where is this demand coming from? You know, it doesn't even have to be the demand. I mean, yeah. the demand could just remain stable. It's the supply side right, that it right, is right. really being disrupted. It's, uh, you know, South Africa is basically not, uh, or I'm not going to say not, but producing uh, a percentage, a, a small percentage of, of the palladium and rhodium output that they used to put into the market. So that leaves one other producer, and that's the Russians. And these guys aren't stupid. Uh, you know, they probably got good stockpiles in palladium and rhodium, and they're just waiting. And, uh, you know, they'll feed it into the market when they feel uh, they want to. And uh, until then, uh, they're just going to watch their uh, their stockpiles uh, increase in value. Uh, you know, the Russian economy isn't what I'd call the strongest in the world, and they're having their own issues over there. So it's in their interest to withhold the supplies as long as they can to get higher price appreciation, and then they'll sort of feed it into the market. The danger with the Russians... Um, having been in this business since 1974 is uh, from one day to the next all of a sudden they make a decision that they open up the gates and they uh, throw some uh, palladium by some I mean significant tonnage of palladium and or rhodium on the market and you have a significant drop uh, it, uh, very quickly uh, so that's the danger in this market that they come back into the market with supply but with South Africa uh, in the situation they're in right now, the Russians control this market and it's in their interest uh, basically to hold supplies back or, or just sort of feed them into the market as needed uh, and, uh, you know, enjoy the price appreciation of the resource that they're holding. Pete, before I let you go, we spoke uh, gold, palladium. Just the, some thoughts on silver since investors are wondering why it's not moving at the same pace as, uh, you know, they would love to see it move at the same pace as palladium, um, but it's, it's having a hard time catching up to gold. It's lagging. It is lagging. Uh, it, uh, let me rephrase how I just uh, wanted to say that. It has been lagging, uh, but when gold broke uh, through 1578 and is now at 1607, that's, uh, again, incidental, but an increase of roughly about 3%. Uh, silver in the same time went up about 5%. So silver is starting to catch up. Uh, again, uh, it's just a matter of when, not if, uh, silver uh, uh, starts to regain some of its momentum. Obviously, gold needs to stay where it is or go higher. But uh, I can see silver, uh, you know, sort of inching up to uh, $19 without gold doing too much from here. Uh, I think investors are now starting to see the value in silver, at least as a medium to longer term play at these price levels. And we're starting to see uh, some investor interest in silver, uh, which was absent in the market for the past three months. There was virtually nobody interested in buying physical silver. That is starting to change. We're, uh, we're doing uh, probably about 50% more volume in silver uh, over the past two weeks than we've done uh, in, say, the last two months. Wow. Well, that's a big statement. Peter Hug, thanks for those insights. You're thank welcome. you so much for joining us as always. And thank you for watching uh, this edition of Kitco News. Next week, the Kitco News team is headed to the BMO Metals and Mining Conference. You can catch uh, reporter Paul Harris, who will be uh, interviewing all the giants of mining from the show. Thank you so much for watching.